Luffy has officially agreed to not just bring one person from Egghead Island onto the Thousand Sunny, but seven. Luffy accepted Dr. Vegapunk's request to be taken from the island, but that ended up being a package deal, including his six clones. And they're not even the only characters with a shot at joining the Straw Hats right now. The end of Wano debates were fierce, but in the end, both Yamato and Carrot didn't make it. But that's because they both had somewhere else they needed to be. This time around, most of our candidates have very limited options. Let's start with Vegapunk. For some reason, he expected his friend Dragon Sun to arrive on Egghead when nobody else could. The Marines and World Government were totally blindsided by the Straw Hat's involvement. Even Blackbeard could only roll the dice between running into Luffy, Kid, or Law, and ended up with the Surgeon. But one thing the smartest man in the world couldn't predict was how badly things would go. Punk 4, Pythagoras, got blown up by the Seraphim. Punk 1, Shaka, got taken out with a headshot. And Punk 6, York, turned out to be a backstabbing traitor responsible for their deaths. Even the fifth Vegapunk, Atlas, got hit in the face by Rob Lucci's signature secret technique. But luckily, she managed to survive, at least for now. Which is good, because I'm pretty sure she's Luffy's favorite. At first, he only agreed to bring Vegapunk along because the guy has a funny head. But after watching Sento Maru sacrifice everything to save the old man and promising that he would see things through, Luffy is more determined than ever to leave the island with them. But when it comes to the Vegapunks, Stella himself is a bit of a hard sell. Because Nami's log pose hasn't totally synced with Egghead, their best option is to head to the island they locked onto while they were in Wano. The land of the giants, Elbath. And that's probably where they'll split up. With the world government marking him for death, it's one of the very few places that could guarantee his safety. Vegapunk's even on good terms with them, thanks to the whole Ohara books thing. Now, it's pretty much a requirement for Straw Hats to have a grand dream that they would like to achieve. Like Zoro wanting to become the world's greatest swordsman, or Sanji wanting to discover the All Blue. At least on that front, Vegapunk has two. He wants to share all his knowledge with the entire world by using punk records. Pretty much inventing the internet. An idea that Chopper is a big fan of, since Vegapunk has a ton of medical knowledge he could share. Next, he wants to make it so the free energy is available to everyone. Another thing that would no doubt revolutionize the world. But this is something that Luffy doesn't really care for at all. It sounds a bit too heroic, which isn't the image he's going for. Really, if being a pirate would pay the bills, there's no doubt that Vegapunk would be willing. All of his former colleagues, Caesar, Judge, and Queen, were, and still are, awful people. He knows how vile the world government can be, but places morality to the side when they offered him a virtually unlimited budget. But that's hardly a deal Nami would be willing to make. Honestly, the biggest issue with Stella joining the crew might just be a narrative one. He knows way too much. I mean, the moment he saw Luffy use Gear 5, we ended up with an explanation of how Devil Fruit powers are born from humanity's desire for evolution, and how their weakness to the sea is from Mother Nature wanting revenge. Keep this guy around for long enough, and we'll end up speedrunning a bunch of One Piece's greatest mysteries. In reality, Vegapunk will more than likely just be a temporary member. Luffy even jokes that the old man is just like Kianmon when they first meet, and we can probably expect all the other Vegapunks to be the same. But out of all of them, I'd argue that Vegapunk Lilith has the best shot here. She's actually never been away from Egghead Island and is really excited about leaving. A chance to properly see the world might be too great to pass up. Also, she already seems like a total pirate. She can barely contain herself when it comes to treasure and already has quite the history of stealing from pirates. Of course, we already have our own inventor in the form of Frankie, but Stella did say that each of his clones has their own individual field of expertise. We still don't know exactly what that is, but it could give her a shot. From there, we go from former world government affiliates to world government agents. Starting with Rob Lucci, I know it sounds insane, but even if it doesn't happen now, we can't ignore the possibility. There's been no real talk about Pigeon Guy or Usopp's twin joining the crew, and just the idea of teaming up with them was pretty gross to Luffy and Zoro. In the end, they did work together to fight the Seraphim. And they even stuck around to take down York. But at the same time, they're still very loyal to the world government. The moment Kizaru pulled up, Luchi turned on them. But the Leopard Man does have one thing working in his favor. He is a very well-established character. Almost suspiciously so. Think about it, our most recent crew member, Jinbei, was introduced long before he officially joined the Straw Hats. The guy we met in Impel Down didn't actually join the crew until the end of Whole Cake Island. And if we're being technical, Jinbei was name dropped even before Chopper joined the crew. At this point, we're in the final saga. Laugh Tale is closer than ever before. 
It makes sense that Oda might want any new Straw Hats to be characters we already know and understand pretty well. Luffy may not remember his name exactly, but even for him, Pigeon Guy was an unforgettable opponent. Uchi stuck around in the series for more than half the run of the manga. Not only did he receive his own follow-up cover story, but after the time skip, he's shown up in almost every arc to date. He doesn't appear in Fishman Island, but he's teased in Punk Hazard, shows up in the aftermath of Dressrosa, fights Sabo in Film Gold, tries to intervene in Wano, and finally arrives in person on Egghead Island. He's been in more post time skip arcs than Jinbei. Oda clearly has great plans for him. On Egghead, Luchi's actually begun to show signs of a character arc. He's questioned why the world government wants to kill Vegapunk. He's even directly defied orders for the sake of trying to kill Luffy. For now, he's still loyal, but is hardly the same sort of slave he once was. One way or another, Luffy has had a liberating effect on him. Being betrayed by the world government himself might just shift his direction. Speaking of betrayal, how could we not mention Stussy? After blowing her own cover as Vegapunk's double agent, it's not like she'll be able to stick around with CP0. In fact, Rob Lucci is very intent on killing her. As a clone of a former Rocks pirate, a life of the Straw Hats might just be her calling. She's pretty strong, especially as an assassin. She can grow bat wings and knock out her fellow CP0 agents with bites to the neck. And Kaku was even in his awakened form at the time. She also has her own version of Rokushiki techniques. Her version of Kamiye allowed her to move fast enough to evade Luchi's attack with an after image. And her application of Shigan is literally a long range finger gun. Stussy is also extremely well connected on account of being an emperor of the underworld. As queen of the pleasure district, she could provide a whole lot of value to the Straw Hats that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. On that note, instead of joining the crew, maybe she can just go back to being a crime lord. The world government might want to silence her, but after being with them for so long, she should be able to predict their movements pretty well. We also don't know what her dream might be. We know that the original Buckingham Stussy was madly in love with Whitebeard. So maybe she's longing for romance. Boa Hancock certainly wouldn't enjoy her being all over Luffy. But that could parallel the situation the original Stussy had with the former Empress of Amazon Lily, Gloriosa. Next up on the list of ladies Luffy could end up recruiting, we have the most widely accepted prospect to come from this arc, Jewelry Bonnie. As a straw hat, Bonnie comes with a few advantages of her own. First off, she's already a pirate. The last two straw hats, Brooke and Jinbei, were already pirates before joining Luffy's crew. This is a growing trend for a reason. Can a new Straw Hat really be a total scrub at this point? We are talking about the personal crew of a Yonko after all. Anyone who joins us this late in the story is gonna need to be able to handle themselves. Say what you will about Nami and Usopp, but these days, even they shouldn't be underestimated. And Bonnie should absolutely qualify here. We can't forget that she is a member of the worst generation. If nothing else, she is extremely daring. We've seen her infiltrate the Holy Land. That's something only the Revolutionary Army's greatest fighters ever dared to attempt. She also didn't hesitate to stab one of the five elders after he transformed into a giant spider cow abomination. Between Luffy's glorious punch at the auction house and the Grand Fleet reconstructing St. Charles' face at Mary Joa, that seems pretty on brand. While she hasn't gotten many chances to fight, her Paramecia Dofu powers are exceptional. With it, she can manipulate the age of herself, others, and objects. Despite a relative time limit, she can shut down most enemies by either turning them into babies or old people. She can also temporarily distort a person's future, turning them into an older, alternate timeline version. Using it on herself, she was able to become big and bulky like her dad Kuma. As a support ability, she might even be able to do something like give us a glimpse of God Usopp's ultimate potential as a brave warrior of the sea. She can even force objects to rapidly age and corrode. Not to mention the ability to psychologically torment someone by forcing them to face their own death. The Toshi Toshi no Mi is one of the most versatile and potentially devastating Doa fruits we have ever seen. As for her dream, for now, it's a simple one. She wants to have her dad back. That's the whole reason she came to Egghead Island, to force Vegapunk to fix him or be killed. But after experiencing Kuma's memories, she knows that her true enemies are the five elders, namely Saint Saturn. For me, the biggest sell for the Bonnie agenda would have to be Kuma's previous statement to her. In the past, he spoke to her about the warrior of liberation, Nika, how he always wanted to be like the sun god since he was a child. To this, Bonnie asked him something very important. Would Nika come and free her too? Her father confirmed this with a smile, while fully knowing the awful cybernetic fate that awaited him. Kuma placed all his faith in Luffy saving his daughter, 
freeing her. Bonnie may be a pirate, but plagued by the loss of her dad, she's anything but free. Although it might not be very scientific to say, Dr. Vegapunk believed that Luffy winding up on Egghead Island was fated to be, and it looks like that includes saving Bonnie. She doesn't have a crew anymore, and despite her bravery, fighting the world government isn't something she'll be able to do on her own. Maybe she can follow in her father's footsteps and join the Revolutionary Army. But again, that wouldn't be the freedom Kuma wanted for her. The likelihood of Bonnie joining the crew is pretty good. She even likes Sanji's cooking. But there is a very strong alternative here that could have a similar effect. Luffy could just reunite her with Kuma. While it may not have been totally confirmed yet, it's possible that the real Kuma is still on Egghead Island. Kuma's original body may have been recovered by the Revolutionary Army, but suddenly, in the middle of repairs, he started running away. Nobody was able to stop him, and he ended up going to the Red Port. From there, he climbed the Red Line all the way up to the Holy Land. After that, he seems to be picking up where the Revolutionaries left off, causing unprecedented destruction. Although he has every reason to want to destroy the place, this isn't like Kuma. Either he's kind, enigmatic, or subservient. Being violent without orders to do so doesn't line up with what we know about the character. But thanks to his previous conversations with Dr. Vegapunk, we know that his devil fruit can even separate and share metaphysical things like memories. So what if Kuma pulled a Freaky Friday here? What if he traded bodies with the ancient Iron Giant? With Kuma's body, it's just picking up where it left off 200 years ago. Meanwhile, the real Kuma has remained dormant inside this pre-Void Century weapon. That is, until now. After hearing the drums of liberation, unbeknownst to everyone, the Iron Giant has come back online. By simply becoming the Warrior of Liberation, Luffy may have triggered a reunion between Bonnie and Kuma, liberating them both. But there's another enemy of the Celestial Dragons that I really really want to join the crew. Nefertari Vivi. For whatever reason, I've always been a fan of the Big Forehead Princess. So all the newfound emphasis on her lately has been really cool to see. Right off the bat, Vivi has something very special that no one else on this list has. She was already offered a slot on the crew. She went on a full adventure with the Straw Hats, and they all desperately wanted her to join them. But due to her love for her kingdom, she couldn't afford to leave. It's the same situation as Momonosuke and the others in Wano. But in the end, they made a promise. If they ever see each other again, they'll consider Vivi a member of the crew. Following the death of her father at the hands of Imu and the Five Elders, Vivi was captured by CP0. Luckily enough, she managed to escape with Wapol, but Imu still wants her to be detained. At this point, both Vivi and the Hungry Hungry Hippo are hanging out with Big News Morgans in his teapot blimp. Right now, returning to Alabasta isn't really an option. But even then, Vivi could feasibly go anywhere and do anything. She's also more up to date on what's going on with Luffy than most others on account of the whole newspaper thing. She knows the Straw Hats are on Egghead, and while she's shocked by the whole taking Vegapunk hostage thing, she still has faith in her friends. Also, there might be more narrative elements backing her beyond simply waiting a long time for this. If you notice, Oda is retracing previous arcs of the story. We had the return of the Water 7 saga in the form of Luchi and Kaku running into the Straw Hats again. To beat Luchi, Luffy yet again used a new transformation with rough side effects. Before, it was Gear 3rd that turned him small and young looking. This time, he used Gear 5 and it made him look decrepit and old. There was a traitor angle with the members of CP9 before, and now we have something similar with both Stussy of CP0 and Vegapunk York. Saving Vegapunk from the world government is pretty similar to how the Straw Hats fought to save Robin from the same organization. The Marines raiding the island is like the Buster Call. We even have Ohara callbacks and a follow-up on Saul's situation. At the end of that arc, we really met Garp for the first time, learned about his connection to Luffy, and also saw Kobe again. This time around, at the end of Egghead Part 1, we had Garp and Kobe versus the Blackbeard Pirates. Back then, we had the proper introduction of Monkey D. Dragon 2. And these days, we have him appearing more than ever. We've got Saba Odi again, thanks to the return of Sentomaru and the Pacifista. We've got the rematch of Kizaru vs. the Straw Hats, and a follow-up to the whole Kuma mystery plot. Bonnie was first introduced back then, and now, Bonnie is a major focus. The Celestial Dragons were introduced to us on Saba Odi 2, and now we've got Celestial Dragons galore. At this rate, Elbaf could end up being the new Amazon Lily, for better or for worse. Because after that, whatever happens to Garp after being captured by Blackbeard's crew could be the next impel down. But getting back to the main point, wishfully following this trend, 
After Ennis Lobby, we could end up with Frankie joining the crew. Not only that, but we also had a previous member rejoin the crew, Usopp. Granted, the middle of a world-shaking incident might not be the best time to reunite, but once the dust settles and the curtain falls in this event, it might be time for a grand return. All that being said, Phoebe would definitely stand out as a bit of a weak link compared to everyone else. They probably wouldn't mind too much considering their history with her, but the last thing we need is a liability right now. The cover page of chapter 1095 might just tease a potential fix for that. We've got a squirrel monkey that's stolen Buggy's red nose, thinking it's a fruit of some kind. Besides the obvious monkey connection to Monkey D. Luffy, this little guy has rings around his eyes that are very similar to the rubber goggles Luffy made for himself while in Gear 5. This might just be alluding to the fact that the Straw Hats will at some point manage to swipe a devil fruit from right under Cross Guild's noses. Think about it, we've been on this adventure for ages, yet not once have the Straw Hats gotten their hands on a single devil fruit over the course of their journey, which truly just goes to show how rare these things truly are. When Luffy suggested that Frankie eat Ace's devil fruit back on Dressrosa, the cyborg refused, not wanting to become an oversized anchor. Everyone on the crew either already has devil fruit powers or their own thing going on that isn't really worth overshadowing. Meanwhile, Phoebe has fancy yo-yos, I guess. And her becoming a hockey master before so many others on the crew just sounds silly. But what do you guys think? And is anyone still betting on Yamato becoming a straw hat anytime soon? Travel time is a bit hard to pin down in this series, but at best, they've probably only been away from Wano for a few days, so for me, it's a bit hard to imagine. Or maybe you're hoping Sento Maru sticks around. Luffy does like him after all. Whatever the case, leave us all your thoughts in the comments. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.